Iran's foreign ministry spokesman has rejected the Israeli claim that it intercepted an Iranian drone allegedly launched from Syria. Baton Qasimi also rejected as absurd Israeli claims of Iran's interference in the downing of an Israeli military jet on Saturday. He said Israel cannot use its usual lies and propaganda to cover up for aggressions and crimes that it commits. Meanwhile, Lebanese foreign ministry has denounced Israel's aggressive policy after Tel Aviv used Lebanese airspace to attack Syria. It also voiced support for Syria's legitimate right to respond to any Israeli aggression. The Lebanese resistance movement Hezbollah also said that this incident marks the start of a new strategic phase. Russia's foreign ministry has said that it is seriously concerned by the developments and has been urging all sides to avoid an escalation. This is thought to be the first Israeli jet brought down by hostile fire in decades. It was shot down by the Syrian regime. Both pilots survived after ejecting, though one is seriously injured. They were flying back after striking Iranian targets in Syria. The military says that attack was in response to an Iranian drone violating its airspace on Saturday. <laughs> Tehran says that claim is ridiculous. After its jet crashed, Israel launched a second and more intensive air raid, striking a dozen military targets in Syria, four of them Iranian. <laughs> If one country thinks that boosting terrorism or meddling in the affairs of other countries or the bombardments of neighboring countries can gain desirable results, they're making a mistake. We are prepared to be active for the security of the region more than before. Israel accuses Iran of setting up military bases in Syria and arming Hezbollah. I would like to make it clear, Israel seeks peace, but we will continue to defend ourselves in the face of every attack against us, in the face of every attempt by Iran to entrench itself militarily in Syria or any other place. Brigadier General Hossein Salami said Tehran will not confirm any report from Tel Aviv because Israelis are liars. The top commander also emphasized that Iran has no military presence in Syria and only provides advisory support to Syrian forces, Salami noted that the Syrian army itself can defend the country against enemies. Russia backs the Syrian regime, but also coordinates with Israel. It has called for restraint and says all sides must avoid escalating the situation. Uh, actually, the, those who rule Syria, the owners of Syria, are the Russians, not Bashar Assad. He's a puppet of uh, President Putin. So uh, it's up to uh, uh, President Putin to decide. Uh, Israel uh, wanted the Iranians out, and then uh, after Netanyahu realized it's not uh, possible, then uh, they had to accept the fact that the Iranians are there in Syria. But the question is how far they will be uh, from the Israeli borders. The conflict in Syria has dragged on for nearly seven years now and it's only getting more complicated. Violence also fled in eastern Syria, where on Thursday the US-led coalition said it had killed at least 100 pro-regime fighters to fend off an attack on its Kurdish allies. The clash marked a fresh escalation between Washington, which has threatened the regime over its alleged use of chemical weapons, and Damascus, which labelled the latest incident in eastern Syria as a war crime. Well, for more on the situation in Syria, I'm joined in the studio by François Vincat's Wassim Nasr. Wassim, hello, thank you for hello. being with us. Uh, the Sy Syrian conflict is a uh, particularly complex. It's the ultimate multiple proxy war. Uh, is that why the UN has yet to get involved? Yes, in a way. On the other hand, because the UN Security Council has its hand bound by multiple uh, Russian vetoes, especially whenever it's about uh, the use of, uh, of chemical, uh, chemical weapons. And today, as we saw in the, uh, in the package before, the civilians in Syria are paying the highest price because all parties there are having already, as you said, their proxy wars. And civilians are like not uh, at all considered by the actors, uh, the actors on the ground. And it's good to stop for a bit about the American strike here against um, loyalist uh, Syrian militias, loyalist to Damascus. We have to say that those militias are Sunni militias, for example, that the regime um, was able to gather uh, in order to stop the YPG 
aided by the U.S. So those people are from this region and they tried to attack the YPG in this area where the Conico oil field uh, exists. But on the other hand, we see that this fight between a proxy of the regime and a proxy of the United States, but on the other hand, the same proxy of the United States, so the Kurdish militias, were allowed to cross all this area controlled by the regime in order to join the battle of Efrin, for example, against the Turks. So we see that it's very complicated today. We have Russian presence here and here, American presence here, here, and in Banbij in order to counter any uh, Turkish uh, aims in Manbij against Kurdish, uh, Kurdish factions. And we have also Iranian presence, uh, mostly uh, southern, uh, southern of, uh, of Aleppo. So, what is the, the Turkish endgame in, in the north there? Actually, the Turkish, the Turks want only to secure a security zone. They don't have any political ambition uh, in Syria as, for example, taking out Assad or whatever. Today, their ambition is, seeing, uh, is seen on a very low level, which is only securing the frontier and also uh, implementing the Astana uh, deal made with Russia, because each move uh, taken by Turkey today in Syria is do, is been done with the okay, uh, tacit okay of Moscow. So we see that when they entered this area of Jarablus, uh, the Aleppo town was taken by the regime a few years ago, and then we saw them go into Idlib in order to create a buffer zone with Kurdish militias, and then all the way last week to South Aleppo, also to create a buffer zone between the regime and the rebels here. So today we have the town of Aleppo secured from the west and from the east with Turkish proxies and the Turkish army. But despite all that, we have subversive forces on the ground, like Al-Qaeda offshoots in Idlib itself, and Shia militias here, which are trying to keep on the fight. So today we see that we have big decisions taken in uh, capitals like Ankara, Moscow, and Washington, but on the ground we are seeing multiple proxy wars ongoing without, without direct involvement of the real players. And I guess that this is the trend which is going to be uh, the reality of Syria for the upcoming years. Wasim Nas, thank you very much for that.